Today I'm sharing two cargo pants with really cool features. It's a really comfortable fit. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And I'm here today to share my two versions of the Largo cargos. This is a brand new pattern from Love Notions that's been in the works for a while. I've been working on mine for a, quite a while now. <laughs> I'm very happy with the result, with the fit, with the look, with the details. It's a very comfortable fit. You can see the details on the liner here that at the waist, we don't have a waistband. We have a facing that is amazing. And we also have a fly front zipper. If you've watched the previous video on the channel, you would have seen how to do that because I made a separate video about the technique. So go ahead and see that one when we get to the sewing segment. I love the result of that. It's just so nice and comfortable to wear a facing at the waist instead of a waistband. It's still snug, it still keeps up your pants, but it just feels so much more comfortable. That is what got me excited when I saw this pattern. When I see a pattern, I look at the liner, do a quick analysis, and seeing that waist facing there got me really excited because I've sewn waist facings before on other pants and I know the comfort, I know how that feels. When I see a feature that is not common like this, but that I know is super comfortable, it makes me very happy because I've always loved a waist facing. So the fact that these cargo pants have them is a thumbs up from me. <laughs> it's snug at the waist and hips, you know, it'll fit your natural waist, but then from the upper thigh down, it'll be a straight leg pant that will just flow down. You have a bit more space over there. As usual with cargo pants, you have a few patch pockets. The front patch pockets are really nice. I've actually hacked other pants that don't have these types of pockets to have these types of pockets because I've always enjoyed them. Patch pockets are non-bulky, they lay flat on the fabric, they're easy to sew, and I think visually they are pretty. So the fact that I don't have to hack anything in this pattern is amazing because the pockets are there and I like that. Got a little slanted edge right there. And then at the back, you have the typical patch pockets that you'll see on a lot of pants, similar to the ones on jeans that have a point at the bottom. You have one pocket on the side of the left thigh. I suppose if you wanted one on both sides, you could add on both sides if you want, but the original design has just one. And you also have a flap. You can do a little buttonhole and a button there. And another detail that you have that is optional is a strap that is sewn on the back pocket and it just folds over into the side seam. You'll see that on the liner, it's more apparent from the back of the pants. And I have sewn that on one of my pants and on another version, I left that out. Another thing that I always see, but I never sew, are belt loops. I just don't need a belt loop to hold up my pants because I never wear a belt with pants. They are there if you want them. <laughs> when Love Notions releases a new pattern, they have it on sale for a week. A discounted price, I believe it's around 25% off. Even more though, if you use my code at checkout needles 10, it goes down a further 10% of the sale price. That goes through the 25th of September next week on Monday. And you can find my affiliate link in the pinned comments. So it's really easy. You go to the comment section, it's right on the top or in the description box of the video. You don't pay any extra if you use my affiliate link. The only thing that happens is that I receive a small commission back and that is one way that you can support the work that I do here on YouTube. The Lago has been drafted for fabric that does not stretch, bottom weight, so denim, corduroy, canvas, bottom weight linen, velvet, that type of fabric is gonna be the best type to get the intended fit. Now, I know a lot of the testers used stretch woven. I have put an asterisk there. I prefer to use patterns designed for stretch woven to use stretch woven because usually the ease is going to be a little bit less. So I would rather have less ease when my fabric is going to stretch a little bit. If I had to use a stretch woven for this one, I would look at the composition and I wouldn't let myself have more than 1% spandex. That means that you just have a little give, but it's not going to be very stretchy. If you use very stretchy woven fabrics, you're going to get a completely distorted fit. I think just using the woven fabric that doesn't stretch is going to give you the best fit and the best results than if you start straying and using other fabrics that stretch because then you would have to approach fitting in a totally different way. Woven, woven, I've chosen linen for all of mine. <laughs> bottom weight and I think it's a great choice at least for me I always find pretty colors it's easy to work with 
top stitching looks beautiful. And I've seen so many cargo pants in the shops made out of linen. I think it's a great fabric. If I would have found a denim that was a little softer and a little lighter, I might have tried it with denim as well. Other notions that you need are some fusible interfacing. You need some for the facing at the waist. Also to stabilize the entrance of the pockets on the front. And I like to stabilize the extended facings that you have for the zipper installation so that is something I like to interface. If the fabric was super heavy and super structured I wouldn't but at least with linen I like interfacing that area as well and then you need two buttons one for the waist one for the side pocket if you want to put a button there. The sizing comes from 0 to 32 US size 32 goes up to a 59 and a half inch hip and for the waist you have two options in the pattern and I think the second option is going to help a lot of people so you have the standard waist fit which is gonna give you about half an inch of ease, which is typical, it's a snug waist, it's not gonna be uncomfortable, it's gonna keep your pants up. But then there's a full belly adjustment already done. So when you look at your measurements and the size chart, if your measurements put you on a smaller hip size and a larger waist size, then the full belly option is gonna give you around two more inches of space at the waist in relation to the feet on the hips, which is gonna stay nice nice and snug, just with a bit more space on the top. So if that is your case, you are going to be happy. And then at the hips, we're gonna have about two and a half inches of positive ease. Then from the upper thigh and down, it's a straight leg fit, so we're gonna have space there. Although if you have thinner thighs or larger thighs, you might wanna blend into a size there or blend out. There are finished garment measurements for each size so that you can compare and you can see if you need that or not. Now for personal fitting, and I say this with every single pant, if you've not made it before, I wouldn't just go ahead and make it and think it's gonna fit perfect. These are not custom made for us specifically. We all have our different heights and different shapes. So doing a test pair is always gonna give you a lot of information. And I'm a huge advocate of making non-wearable test garments, especially for pants, because you don't have an expectation that you're gonna wear this. You can get it done really quickly, just ugly fabric. You sew side seams, you sew inseams, you sew a centered zipper that can take you no time. You don't waste time sewing details and pockets and top stitching. You don't have an expectation that you're gonna wear this. Another thing you can do with your test garment is figure out where you want the patch pockets to be. It's much easier to know when you have your final pair, you can just put them on and sew when you have these pattern pieces flat and not trying to figure that out afterwards when you've already sewn the garment. If you were trying to just wing this and fit as you go that approach with your final fabric, the order of the way that you're making these pants can get altered quite a bit. It's quite difficult to try them on. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be trying on and off, on and off without having the facing on there, which is what you do at the very end because you might just stretch it all out, you know. I just advocate for a good test garment that you can not worry about. You're not trying to make it wearable, but it is gonna give you the information that you need. I never regret the extra 15 minutes it takes to make one at all. So in my case, I approach this by doing flat pattern measurements first. In this case, it's easier because you don't have to pin on a waistband onto the pattern. You can just measure your front and the back and take away the seam allowance on the top because this is a waist finish, your pant leg there is complete up to where it's gonna reach, so it's easy to measure. When I did this, I thought my front was okay, and at the back, I needed an extra inch. So I did that at the center back, tapering to nothing on the side seams. I'm just using the standard fit for the waist. I saw a straight size 18. I made that test garment and I was 90% happy. <laughs> I just felt that I had some pulling at the crotch right at the bottom on the front. So I decided to give myself a quarter of an inch extra crotch extension, but only on the front. That was all I needed. All the rest was really good and I was happy to move on to my linen. Now these have a 30 inch inseam. It's stated there on the pattern. So if you know your inseam, this is very helpful to know if you need to make the legs longer or shorter, easy to adjust because it's a straight leg pant. So there's no drama there. Mine are one and a half inches longer. Now for the sewing, if you watched the previous video on the channel, I have already shown you the zipper and the facing technique. It's already there so you can see it. So in this episode, I'm gonna focus on general sewing construction. We're using a 3.8 seam allowance, lots of top stitching, just making everything super accurate and I really enjoy the process. So let's see.
my lago cargos are red this is linen and here are all the pieces this is the back leg and here is the facing there is going to be a center back seam in this facing here we have the front leg and this area that's black is the extended facing for the zipper technique i like to interface this area especially if i'm working with linen here is a zipper shield and I have a matching red zipper here i'm glad i had a matching color on the left leg on the side you're going to have a patch pocket it's only on one leg and here is the flap for it here are more pockets some for the back and other patch pockets for the front the original way to finish the slant pocket open is to interface that slanted edge serge it and then fold it back and top stitched but i have drafted a small little facing there instead just as something extra Whenever I'm sewing a pattern that has a lot of patch pockets, I like to batch prepare them at the very start. So I'm going to serge the edges, fold the tops in so that they're all set to go when it's time to actually sew them onto the main pieces of the garment. Another step I do at the very beginning without thinking much about it is to stay stitch the waistlines. You can see that there's a nice curve on the front and the back and that has the potential of stretching out, especially linen. I'm at the sewing machine here and I want to make sure the stay stitching happens this is the back there is a back dart there ignore that it, you can still stay stitch and then sew the dart you don't have to sew the dart beforehand and i'm going to get this stay stitching done on the back i'm only going to film the back but i'm also going to do the front at the same time all within the seam allowance smaller than 3 8 because 3 8 is what we're going to use later to sew on this facing and this is done with a regular stitch length i'm quickly doing some guide stitches all around the edges of the pockets i have already searched them all and i'm doing this at 3 8 of an inch because that's the amount that we're going to fold it in towards the wrong side i'd rather not eyeball that and burn my fingers at the iron i find it easier to just do a long stitch length with a contrasting thread and guide the sewing on the metal plate underneath it always gives you a really neat result and very very nice rectangle pockets without any wonky folds so there's a lot of this to do but because i'm batch doing them all it'll happen quickly this is one of the front patch pockets you can see it's got a funny shape this little short end over here is going to be caught in the side seam so you don't need to serge that edge it's just all raw and then this other curved area on the top is going to be caught in the waist with the facing so it's also raw you don't need to serge that the other two long ends, those are the ones that are surged and pressed in towards the wrong side. In the pattern, what you have to do to finish this lamp pocket opening is, is use a strip of fusible interfacing and stabilize that area on that slanted edge. That will prevent it from stretching out. Once that's fused on, you can just serge that, fold it in by 3 8 and top stitch. And that is very simple. That's the way you finish the edge and then you'll be ready to sew these onto the front leg. I did do that finish with my other pink pair of pants. But for this one, I just created a small little facing from the same pocket piece. Doesn't really change anything. I just created the piece from that, interfaced it, surged the edge, and you can see it matches the shape. And I'm just going to put these right sides together and get them sewn at 3 8 In the end, the pocket's going to turn out the same size because originally you were going to fold it back by 3 8 In this case, I'm folding a facing back by 3 8 And as with any facing, I'm going to understitch. I'm going to push the seam allowance underneath the facing and sew on the edge. And then just fold my facing to the inside, give it a quick press, and then I'll be ready to top stitch. And then this pocket opening is just going to be a little more sturdy. That's why I created the small facing. But you don't have to, I just like facings in general. <laughs> For the top part of the side pocket, there's only one of those and the back patch pockets. On the top edge, you would fold it in twice by half an inch and top stitch. I prefer to just fold it in once by one inch, that's why I serge the edge. And I like to finish the top of pockets by folding that top end onto itself, right sides together, and then sewing these little seams. Once those little seams are sewn, we flip it, and then we get such a clean little finish on the top of the pockets. It's very neat and easy to top stitch down later. After getting them all pressed and neat, I'm quickly top stitching these. At about three quarters of an inch, I still have a bit of fabric underneath. Turns out very neat. I find less bulky than folding it twice. I prefer to just fold it once. We only have one patch pocket on the leg and it's a rectangle and that pocket has a flap. It's just a little rectangle as well that you fold right sides together and then sew the short ends together by 3 8 Once we do that, we flip it right sides out and we get our flap. The two row edges, we need to make sure they're together and we can serge that closed. And then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this with two rows, like I'm going to top stitch everything else. Just get that out of the way. I'm getting ready to start sewing my zipper. I'd rather sew the zipper first and get it out of the way as one of the main construction processes here in the pants. After preparing the pockets, 
and stay stitching the waist. Now I'm not going to include the zipper technique in this video because I have a separate video all about it. It includes the zipper and the facing. So go ahead and watch it. This is how the thumbnail looks. Just note here that I have interfaced my extended facing pieces, the edges of the interfacing on the black. That is actually the seam line. I have little reference points. Here you see a dot two inches down from the raw edge of the waist. That's where the zipper is going to stop to allow space for the facing underneath. It's quite a fun technique. Once you get used to it, it can happen quickly. You can see that the top stitching only starts two inches away from the top edge up to this point. I reinforced that by hand so it's really neat on the top and you can see my two rows. I still have my friction pen mark there that's gonna come out with the iron. This is how it looks like from the wrong side. I'm marking the right wear side and the left wear side on the facings there so you can see. At this point, this is all I'm gonna do with the zipper. I'm gonna continue constructing my pants. You can see I've got the front patch pockets hand basted on and I'm gonna return to finish all the details of the zipper when I'm at the stage where I'm ready to sew on the facing which is towards the very end once the side seams, the inseams are sewn, all of that. So there's quite a lot to do until we return to the facing and the zipper. Easy top stitching, I'm using a quarter of an inch presser foot first. That always gives you a really nice neat result. If you don't have one, you're missing out on a super professional finish with little effort from your part because the presser foot just keeps it so steady. If you did it freehand, you know, you might get a little wobbliness here and there. So I love my presser foot. And then I'm top stitching on the edge with my blind hand presser foot with a needle to the left. It's also another great presser foot I'm using continuously and it gets you a really nice edge stitch. Now on the table, you see my front is completely done. I've got the pockets on, the zipper is 90% done so I can forget about it for a while and start working on the back. Now I have pulled out my back pattern pieces. I've done a simple seam, which is sewing the back crotch together. It's a curved seam. I've already done that off camera and now I'm sewing the back darts. I sew my darts the same every single time, no matter where they are, no matter what fabric type, I always start from the dart tip, from the point. I fiddle with my presser foot and needle until I get it to go inside the fabric right on the edge. I don't back tack and then I sew off to the wider part of the dart. At the tip, I'm gonna just knot it by hand and that gives you a really nice result. Look, this dart is gonna be partially covered with the patch pocket, so if you didn't get the neatest point there, it doesn't really matter. No one's gonna see it. Don't lower your standards. I don't, even if no one's gonna see the tip, I always do the same technique. I decided not to top stitch the crotch on the front at all, but I will do a edge stitch on the back crotch. The seam allowance is towards the left wear side. I had already determined the positioning of my back patch pockets with my test garment, so I knew exactly where they had to go. And the same as with everywhere else, I'm doing the top stitching all the same. I'm doing a quarter of an inch first going all around these shapes. There's a lot of little places to pivot there. I just slow down and then I do the second row with my blind hand presser foot. At this point, we have a front that's already done and now we have a back that's already done and we just place them right sides together. And at this point, we are going to align the side seams and sew them. Very simple seams, I'm not gonna film that. That is so boring. <laughs> just sew them at 3 8 seam allowance and then serge the edges. We need to leave the inseams open because we need access to be able to sew one of the pockets that's gonna go on the thigh. So don't get ahead of yourself and sew the inseam as well. You won't be able to access your leg to be able to top stitch the pocket. Okay, the side seams have been sewn and surged. I've pressed the seam allowance to the back. It's super easy to press when you have all the leg open like that. And now well, I'm just gonna open up the side seam on the left thigh. If you wanted it on the other side, it doesn't really matter. And if you want two patch pockets, go ahead and put one on each side. There isn't a specific placement for this pocket that goes on your left thigh. Just place it where you want it to be. I've decided to place it about one and a half inches below the patch pocket that you already see this. I've measured and put a few pins as references and that's where I'm going to align the top of my patch pocket, which is just a rectangle. But before doing that, I'm gonna fold my patch pocket in half lengthwise and it's lean and I can finger press, I'll get a little crease mark there and I'll align these little creases with the seam with the side seam so that the pocket ends up being centered. Then I'm gonna do the same thing I did with all the other pockets, hand base that on, make sure it's very neat and top stitch that. And then I'll come back to show you how to sew the flap on because that is different. Okay, here you can see the pocket has already been sewn on. It's all very neat. That is gonna be the right side of my flap. I'm gonna make sure the nice part of my flap is touching the legs, right sides to get. 
is touching the leg right sides together. I'm just gonna flip this flap and that serged edge is gonna touch the top of the pocket here. They should have the same width and I'm gonna pin it in place and then we're gonna sew that with 3-8 seam allowance. Now that we've sewn it there, we can bring the flap over. Now as optional, you should have done a buttonhole if you want one before sewing on the flap. I decided I'm not doing that so you don't see any buttonhole there but it would be easier to do it on the flap when it's free and not sewn on first. So make sure you think about that. And now we can top stitch this down with a quarter of an inch. This shouldn't catch the top of the pocket that you have underneath. Just make sure you move it out of the way if you're concerned. And we just top stitch that down. That'll hold the flap in place. Now I feel like I'm almost done. All we need to do now is join up the inseams. We can serge and sew those and then we still have the raw waist to deal with and the final little details of the zipper. You will see all those steps in the previous video where I show the zipper and the facing technique that comes at the very end. But otherwise your general construction is done and you'll just have a hem to do. This is my first Lago Cargo. This was made in initial phases of testing and there is a feature here that you won't see in the final pattern. It was taken out of the design, although it doesn't affect the feet at all. It is a seam right here. So on the front and the back leg, there's a horizontal seam. It was intended to fit above the knee, which it does for me, but I can totally see how difficult it would be to fit this because everyone's legs are different. So there are people where this might end up way too long, like under the knee or right in the middle of the knee where it's uncomfortable. So this, seam here was eventually eliminated from the design but it was only a seam it didn't change the feet it didn't have shaping features or anything like that so i do have a seam ignore it you can barely tell it's there otherwise it's a straight leg like the final pair such an unusual color for cargo pants there is the waist area with the facing inside the zipper tape stops right there and then we have your zipper fly technique right here very nice, I just have a beige zipper in there because I don't have a pink one. I don't have belt loops like I mentioned, I don't wear that. And we have the patch pockets on the back. Here's a little different thing that I do with pockets. Instead of folding the top of the pocket twice by half an inch and top stitching, I just fold it in once by one inch. It ends up being the same size, it's just folded in once. Simple top stitching, two rows, the presser feet do wonders. The front patch pocket here with a slant pocket opening. This one is stabilized with interfacing, serge, then folded in, top stitched. For my second pair, you'll see that I drafted a little facing. <laughs> Just, I wanted to add that. Similar pockets like this for other patterns. Didn't have to do that here. This is the strap that's optional. You sew on this part of the strap when you're sewing on your patch pocket. It's just behind this. You leave the strap hanging. When it's time to sew in the side seam, you catch the other side on the side seam like that. And then on the left thigh, we have the patch pocket with the flap. I decided not to do a buttonhole or button. I just decided to leave it. With my top stitching, I try to find a color that matches because I find that when it's not too contrasting, you can dress these up more. If I do more co contrasting features, they look more casual. It's just all personal style. <laughs> you can add as much details as you want. You can make these your own. Very neat facing on the inside. This is my first pair of Lago Cargos by Love Notions. This is a size 18. I really love them. It's a very unusual shade of pink. Initially, I thought I had nothing to go with them, but I actually do have quite a few things. This is a neat top that has a snake print in pink tones. So I thought it was the perfect match. Both have a sporty vibe and I have some walkable heels, a nice handbag to just break it all up. And this is an outfit I would wear 100% and I'd be really happy rocking my pink cargos. Tuck this in a little so you can see the waist detail. Here's a closer look at the patch pockets on the front, zipper, very clean finish with the waist facing inside. There's a single button there. Just one pocket on this side right here. A few in just that one and a half inches below this one. Here is a look at the back. It reaches my natural waist where I'm comfortable. There is the facing patch pockets. I place them a little bit higher. A lower look at the pants. You can see it up to the hip. It's nicely fitted, but then from the upper thigh down, it just goes down straight. You might be able to see a little cheeky seam right above the knee. 
This is a seam that was later eliminated in the final pattern. It didn't really affect any of the fit. It's just an extra seam that's been top stitched. I'm so happy I took the chance on this color and I love these cargo pants. They are not the typical color. I think this pink is amazing. It's not a pastel baby pink. It's not a hot pink either. And I can't wait to wear it out. I think it's totally me and I love this style. It's so comfortable. And these cargos have just the right amount of details. Not too much, not too little. Just right. Here are my Lago Cargos again, my lovely pink pants. This time, an easy combination with one of my Terra tunics. It's an embroidered neat material that looks like broderie and glaze, but it's not cotton, it's just a neat. You can't really go wrong, and I think having these white things now gives me so much more options in my wardrobe. I didn't have white items in the past, and I've really been enjoying them. Who says you can't wear cargo pants with very high heels? This is my dressed up version of these Lago cargos. These heels are pretty high, but they have a platform which makes them super easy to walk in. I have this fun top that I thrifted more than 10 years ago that matches with pink exactly. And then my trusty Metra blazer, the sleeveless one I made, goes on top really well as a light layering piece. And I love this look. You can do it with cargo pants, whatever you want. You can see I have not shown you any sporty look with sneakers at all. I just really wanted to pull out outfits that would make me feel amazing today. So no sneakers. Sneakers are for comfort, but I think these looks really represent me the best. Here is my red pair. I love this one so much. This fabric is a little heavier than the pink one. Still bottom weight, still very appropriate. Love the tone of red. Here is the slant pocket opening. The only difference is that I drafted a little facing here from the same pocket piece, nothing really special. It just makes it a little more structured than folding it back in, like I did with the pink version. Facing is top stitched, the zipper right there. Everything is in a matching color. Top stitching goes all the way up to the top and I have a red button or double rows of top stitching in my patch pocket on the left leg. In this case over here on the right, I don't have that strap. I do believe the strap is an optional feature if you want to put it there or not. It doesn't really affect the feet or anything. <laughs> For this one, I just left it more simple. And then this is the original version. It just has a leg. There's no seam like the other one. This is how it's supposed to be. The feet is exactly the same though. I really, really enjoyed these. They did take ages to sew, not because they were difficult, it was because I was filming so many components of the construction part. So I'm always with the camera, I'm always talking. So it does make the process a lot longer for me. I was not filming the pink version and I that was like done in a jiffy. <laughs> I really enjoyed the process and I just can't wait to wear my red cargo pants. And this one has the facing inside. It feels so nice on and instead of leaving the edges raw, I just extended the facing length by a quarter of an inch so I could fold it in by a quarter of an inch. It ends up being the same. It's the same width. It's just a different finish there for the edge. This is how the right side of the pants look. This is where we have the shield covering up the zipper tape underneath. The facing goes right up to the edge. The button is sewn right there where the shield is joining with the waist of the pants over here. On the left side is where we traditionally have this type of top stitching. Here on the top, we have a buttonhole and the zipper is stopped short up to here. In this sewing segment, of course, you didn't see anything about the zipper and the waistband because I filmed it in detail and I have a standalone video for that technique. So I think it's just easier for you to see that specific part. If this scares you, please don't be scared. Just go ahead and watch my video on this technique and you'll be sweet. All the rest of the pants is pretty straightforward. And yeah, this is so great. Let's see them on. These are my second Lago cargos, straight size 18 with a few length adjustments, red linen, absolutely love them. I've decided to dress it up a little bit just to have fun. I've pulled out one of my nicest blouses in a snake print, flowy, and I've got snake print shoes as well. I love this look. This matches my personal style perfectly and I feel really comfortable. Amazing, I love how this looks together with these neutral colors on the top plus the red. That is actually the star of the show here, the pants. You know, I won't ever tuck in, but let's show you some details. <laughs> here is a really neat zipper technique. I've got all the top stitching in matching red. I just like to match my top stitching so that I could dress up some pants. Sometimes contrasting top stitching makes everything look a little more informal. So it's really, really nice. I think the front crotch fits really well. It's so smooth. He's so comfortable with the facing inside. 
patch pockets here on the front. I drafted my own little facing for the slant pocket opening, just something extra I added. And I have the pocket here on the thigh, just one side. You know, if you wanted, you could add one on the other side if you want. Or if you don't want to add any pocket down here, just leave it off. I think the pockets are all optional. That is how the bag looks. I think it fits really comfortable. I have my patch pockets there. There's a dart, there's the waist and I'm very happy with it. Here is a lower look of the leg. You can see that the leg just goes straight down. It's a comfortable hem. Mine is one and a half inches longer. The original pattern just has a leg. There's no seams. Or in the pink one, I had a seam above the knee. That doesn't exist. For my side pockets, I did the flap and everything, but I didn't do a buttonhole button. I just left it plain. Less details is more for me sometimes. <laughs> I had such hard time choosing the color to make all of my pants. I'm so happy I went with the non-traditional colors for cargo pants. I really wanted to work with this fabric and I can't wait to wear these out. Especially this outfit, it's a real winner for me. I feel amazing. And yeah, I'll be wearing it exactly like this to go somewhere nice. This time I'm wearing my Lago cargos with a white Terra tunic again. I brought it back. This is not a tunic actually, it's a top. I just make them shorter. Can't go wrong with a red and white combination. And as I said before, I'm really enjoying my white pieces that I've been sewing up recently. Easy pairing, there's no way to go wrong. classic red and black look couldn't be missing here. I know a lot of people don't like this combination red and black but I think it suits me and I feel amazing. Any day, any given hour if I'm dressed in red and black it's when I feel my best and this is a one shoulder tank very very summery top really floaty flowy easy to wear just matches the comfort of the pants. I really enjoy pants that are fitted at the waist and hips because that means I can wear something flowy on top without being pressured to tuck in because it all just looks too boxy. You know, even though the leg is wider, just the fact that it fits up here really well means I can wear tops like this without going to front town, you know? <laughs> there are so many other ways I could have styled these red pants, but I just decided on three simple looks. It's way, way, way too hot for me to even think about dressing these up for winter with boots and jackets, but I definitely could. I think the details on the Lago cargos are just enough to make them a cargo pant without going overboard. If you look around, there are some cargo pants that have a billion features that have 3D type pockets. There's just so much that you can see on cargo pants that for my personal style is a bit much. So this is just right. One pocket on one leg is enough for me. If you want to do two pockets, go ahead and put one on the other leg. Put the strap in or not. Top stitch as much or as little as you want. You can really just customize the look to what you prefer. And what if you just wanted to make these pants without the pocket on the thigh, just the front patch pockets and the back patch pockets, you would still get an amazing pair of pants. I'm very happy with my choices and my colors and my fabric. The base fit of the pant, being straight leg as it is, means that it's a classic for me, that are super comfortable, that fit well, and especially because that waist facing, I'm just really in love with it. I could wear these for a long time and not feel that I'm trendy or not trendy, it's something I do not want, I don't pay attention to that. It's so comfortable and yeah, I can't wait to transform my favorite patterns into that finish so I can make them in a different way. You'll see that content later on, you know, I'm always brainstorming new ideas and new ways to sew and that is one that I really, really wanna do for you so you can do it as well. I know you're gonna love the feeling of that facing here in your abdomen. It just feels so good, I promise. Remember that the Lago Cargos are 25% off through next Monday, the 25th of September. Find my affiliate link down below and in the pinned comments, easy for you to find. Check out the technique video for the zipper and the waist so you can see how it's done. And that's all from me. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.